If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of trophies. If you're on Xbox and need some game to score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Well, who'd have thought I'd be seeing this, ladies and gentlemen? We are, according to the calendar, officially into spring, and yet people are still stuck in snow, including myself for that matter. But, at least I'm nice and warm in my flat, ready to give you the latest gaming news. Hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Retro, the Mormon Entertainer, the most inspirational Mormon in all of Asia, here today with the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Sorry I've not been doing this for the past couple of weeks, as I've just been waiting until I get my internet sped up, and good new, and <clears throat> uh, Professor Barnsworth, correct me if I'm wrong, Barnsworth? Good news everyone! My internet is now faster than ever, and it is... Glorious! <laughs> yes, it certainly is. <sighs> anyway, this is going to be a very juicy edition of the podcast today. Uh, so, what on earth are we doing What on earth are we going to do? Well, let's find out what's in store. We have got our... We've got... We've got the latest reports on uh, Horizon Zero Dawn surpassing... Having, having a very good sales tally one year on from its release. Oh, and I need to disable this because... A few moments later. Okay, so here we go. Anyway, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn having a very impressive sales tally. Um, we've got uh, the most delusional president in the world. And the links between video games and violence. But not in the way Trump thinks. Hmm. Uh, and uh, bad news for PlayStation uh, owners. Uh, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita will no longer be part of the PlayStation Plus program. Uh, as of March 2019. What does this mean for free games over the month? We'll find out soon enough. Uh, Mario Switch Mario fans just got some good and bad news. Now, what could that possibly mean? Uh, H1Z1 leaves early access with new cars only. Auto Royale mode. Now, what could that mean? It's Daybreak's Battle Royale game, getting a full launch yesterday, but what exactly is it going to involve? Um, good news for Overwatch fans, we've got a new character revealed as well. What is, what, who is this character and what are they going to be involved in? Uh, Fortnite Battle Royale is getting some jetpacks as well. Um, and uh, it's that most wonderful time of the month as we see the battle of the free games. Xbox versus PlayStation. Who has the better free games throughout March? Let's find out. But as always, but as always, a big shout out to my good friends over at Boomerang Rentals. The best place to rent your games. This is I say this is only for my UK fan base. I don't know if they do it worldwide, but in any case, here we go. Um, packages start from as little as three ninety nine a month. You sign up today, get a twenty one day free trial, three 
free rentals before your subscription begins. You can choose your subscription package when you sign up and when your trial ends, your subscription begins and you can play the latest games at a fraction of what it would cost to buy them. And if you want to keep the games forever, you can buy them at a discounted price on the Boomerang Rentals online store. That is boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your game. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Oh, I recognise that jingle. It means EA have screwed up this week. What have they screwed up? They've screwed up one of their own franchises. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's see what they've screwed up. It's EA's screw up of the week. EA begs, no, Romelu Lukaku begs EA Sports to upgrade his FIFA rating after long bursting run against Chelsea. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, Manchester United forward Romelu Lukaku demanded more credit for his scoring record on the week on the weekend. For his scoring record uh, on the weekend, but that's far from all the Belgians annoyed with. The former Everton man orchestrated a 2-1 win against Chelsea on Sunday by getting United's equaliser and then setting up Jesse, Jesse Lingard's Jesse Lingard for his winner 15 minutes from time. Lukaku has rightly awarded Rick, Lukaku was rightly awarded man of the match but this is 2018 and the Belgian wants recognition on FIFA 18 after his heroics against his former club the striker was given an upgrade from an overall 86 rating to an 88 on FIFA's team of the week making him one of the best all-round forwards on the game but this is what he tweeted I want an upgrade on my acceleration on FIFA the pace is good, but acceleration 70 something? I think you guys saw my sprint at the end of the last game, right? Are you guys going to are you guys going to do something about it? EA Sports? However, Lukaku was far from pleased with his acceleration rating, which he described as 70 something. I'd give that at least 80. The Belgian received a roar of approval from Ho Jose Mourinho. Or Jose Mourinho when he blistered past Chelsea's defence in the dying moments of Sunday's win and he believes the run was proof he deserves an upgrade. I want an upgrade on my acceleration. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I, I just read that tweet out. Lukaku's goal against Chelsea took his total for the season to 22 goals and he'll be hoping to add to and he'll be hoping to add to that when United take on Crystal Palace next Monday. The Belgian international has been in New York this week after Mourinho gave, gave his side three days off as reward for beating Chelsea. Ah, oh. kudos Jose. Credit goes to you Jose. Jose, well played to Lukaku. I actually watched that game and it was, it was a really, really good game. Not very often I can say that about a game that I see my team losing in. But EA? Why? <sighs> Times like this, I just wonder why I bother with EA sometimes. Why do I bother with EA? I've said it before. It's the company I hate, not the games. And yet I refuse to play the games because of the backstage politicking that EA pull off behind the scenes. That's why I hate the company. Their backstage politics ruin their own games. Which is why I refuse to play them. EA, if you Botch Anthem, I will never forgive you again. Why do I bother with EA? Why do I bother with them? And the news doesn't get any better. 
not on the EA front, but for Sony fans. Yes. No way. There's some bad news for those who still enjoy free monthly PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita games on PlayStation Plus. Sony has announced the service will no longer include PlayStation, PS3 and Vita games come March 2019. The current 6 game offering, which has been the norm since the launch of PlayStation 4 was released in November 2013, will see its final month in February 2019. After this, Sony will only include two PS4 games in its monthly lineup, and nothing else. This cuts the offering by two thirds, and given the recent rise in the cost of the service, we imagine there will be some dissatisfaction expressed. It may however mean that we could see more high value PS4 games included in the, in the lineup to reduce the string of the cut. And then there were two. Fortunately, any PS3 or PS Vita games that you have downloaded via the PS Plus service will remain yours as long as you retain your PS Plus account. Outside of this, it doesn't appear that the service or its features will change at all. Other than stating that it intends to focus on PS4 titles, Sony hasn't given much explanation as to why it's dropping these older platform titles. We will, at that point, be five years into the PS4's lifetime. So it may simply be that Sony thinks it's time to move forward. If analyst predictions are correct, it could be a sign that Sony is gearing up for a late 2019 to early 2020 PlayStation 5 launch. That of course is purely conjecture. At this point in time, all we know for certain is that come March 2019, the PS Plus free game offering will be greatly reduced. Sony have made some pretty boneheaded decisions over the last few months. Everything from increasing the cost of PlayStation Plus to this. And you gotta think, why Sony? And they don't bother explaining. No wonder so many people are jumping ship to Microsoft now. No wonder that's happened. One second. this miserable weather folks the joys of this miserable weather all right so we've got some good news and some bad news regarding nintendo switch mario fans right nintendo so mario odyssey is a top title that impressed a lot of people when it was released last year a lot of that came down to its unique gameplay mechanics some of which also helped fans when it came to speedruns Glitches on one of the top Nintendo, Switches of Nintendo Switch games of 2017 include things like using Cappy to capture a frog in midair, which would then be glitched in a hovering swimming position. This came in handy for those looking to complete the game's darker side area. However, it appears that won't be possible anymore for those who recently updated the game. When Nintendo recently added Luigi's Balloon World, they also removed this glitch, which is bad news for speedrunners. The good news is that Nintendo might not have finished yet. The good news is that Nintendo might not have finished with their top title yet. Hmm. Let me see. Overwatch could work. Oh, what a surprise. Fortnite Battle Royale is the most wanted um most wanted game for the switch right having already confirmed that they are interested in bringing more dlc to their new games it appears that that could start with super mario odyssey odyssey producer Yoshi yoshiaki koizumi yoshiaki koizumi recently hinted at new dlc although didn't go as far as to give away any juicy details hmm. well played koizumi revealed that plenty of good ideas didn't make it into the final game and could be used as additional post-launch content. 
No release dates or other details were shared, but with E3 2018 around the corner, yeah, we've got about three months away. Fans might not be waiting long. Speaking to Game Informer, he said there's a lot of volume in Super Mario Odyssey. That was a big focus in development. Give the players loads to do. It's safe to say they're not disappointing. We pushed ourselves to create as much as we could. I can't announce anything specifically today, but of course, if there was a really cool idea for us to do, then we would certainly be thinking about DLC. Okie dokie. On top of our new Super Mario Odyssey artwork that was spotted in by the cutting room floor, the images, which can be seen in the gallery above, were discovered following the release of Super Mario Odyssey Update 1.20. It's possible that it's possible this is a new hint art which suggests which suggests more moons are on the way. During a recent earnings presentation, Nintendo present Nintendo president Tatsumi Kimishi, Kimishima revealed more DLC was on the way, as well as further support for in-game defense. To promote longer gameplay for individual software titles, we plan to implement even more downloadable content and events that build excitement for games. Well. Not about that. Yeah. Now I'm not a speedrunner myself, but these things happen. I'm not a speedrunner, so I can't exactly make uh, my own mode. But I'm sure speedrunners will find other ways of finishing the game quickly. In any case, let's get into some more positive news. Horizon Zero Dawn surpasses 7.6 million sales worldwide in one year. Sony Interactive Entertainment announced today that Horizon Zero Dawn, the PlayStation 4 exclusive action role-playing game made by Guerrilla, has now surpassed 7.6 million sales one year after its launch. It's now the best-selling first-party new IP released on the console so far. Sean Layden, chairman of Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studio, said, We are incredibly grateful that Horizon Zero Dawn and Horizon Zero Dawn The Frozen Wilds have been received so positively by so many gamers, as, and it is a testament to the fantastic work of the entire team at Guerrilla. The combination of beautiful storytelling and great characters with excellent gameplay mechanics has resonated well with fans and led to this exceptional sales milestone. Herman Holst, managing director and co-founder at Guerrilla Games added, We had huge ambition for Horizon Zero Dawn and as we approached the launch, we knew people were excited. But to see sales of this volume is truly mind-blowing. Since the since launch, millions of players have joined Alloy on a quest to discover the secrets of the old ones. We hope they enjoy playing Horizon Zero Dawn as much as we enjoyed making it. Horizon Zero Dawn recently got an expansion called The Frozen Wilds, which according to Fran Francesco was, a, was as bit as good as the base game. With a new focus story, the, a harshly beautiful new arena area, new weapons, enemies and skills, The Frozen Wild is a worthy expansion of the open world game developed by Guerrilla Games. Ultimately, it's more of the same, as the expansion lacks any major new gameplay mechanics, but when so much love is put into a product, is it really an issue? Highly recommended to all Horizon Zero Dawn owners. I might actually get I might actually get back into playing that again at some point. I mean, I had it in my top ten games of uh, twenty seventeen. It was like top five. Or was it six? Cuphead. 
Cuphead, Resident Evil 7. No, no, Resident Evil 7 was fine. Well, I definitely, I definitely had it in my top 10. Anyway. Well. I mean, the only thing I can say now is congratulations to Guerrilla Games on making one of the best games I've lost of this uh, generation. So, okay. Here we go. Let's see. Aha! Video games and violence are linked. What a surprise. But not the way Trump thinks. <laughs> Does Trump ever think straight? Obviously not. Violent attacks on the streaming community are just one way in which video games and violence are uncomfortably intertwined. Right. I didn't think I'd be report I didn't think I'd be reporting on something like this, but nevertheless Onwards we shall soldier. Following the school shooting in Parkland, Florida, responsible for the loss of 17 lives, Donald Trump held a meeting at the White House seeming, seemingly intended to disabuse the nation of the imminent threat of semi-automatic weapons. The president shifted attention to other possible culprits, violent video games, when research clearly shows that it does not cause this problem. The president, sh uh, da, 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 da. he said, I'm hearing more and more people say the level of violence on sick video games is really shaping young people's thoughts. No, you are just being a delusional clown who does not know how to run a business without going bankrupt, let alone run a country. You can't even run a comedy show, let alone run the country, you delusional clown. Considering he couldn't maintain focus on violent games for a full speech, why does that not surprise me? He can't maintain focus on anything, let alone a news cycle. Pretty much makes that my point. It's a challenge to muster concern about what Trump's bluster means for the future of the medium. Simple. Get rid of Trump and never see him again. Nor is it the fate of the video game industry as, pre as pressing as the fate of the nation's populace, whose lives will remain in real peril so long as Trump and his supporters continue to turn the conversation away from the dramatic change in the commercial gun industry. Yet video games do bear a, a real and corrosive relationship with violence, just not in the way that Trump suggests. From threats and harassment of developers and critics, to online game lobbies filled with verbal abuse, to the, to the exponential growth in the number and severity of violent attacks against video game streaming, the, the video game streaming community, to the relationships between video game publishers and weapons manufacturers, to, yes, presumptive and extreme violence in many games themselves. Video games and violence are uncomfortably intertwined. Oh my word, that's, oh, that's a huge article, that's a huge article. I shall persevere though. I shall persevere. Few politicians should be as aware of what ails the video games community as Trump, whose previous chief strategist, Steve Bannon, has benefited so greatly from the toxicity infecting the extremes of the game of culture. Bannon served as executive chairman of Breitbart, during the fulmination of Gamergate in 2014, a hate campaign that targeted women, people of colour, and the LGBTQ community within the video game space, with online harassment, death threats, and face-to-face -face intimidation at conferences and university lectures. Some targets were forced to leave their homes. With the support of ex tech reporter Milo Yanopoulos 
Milo Giannopoulos. I don't know how to pronounce it. Milo surname I can't pronounce. Giannopoulos. Giannopoulos. Milo Giannopoulos. Bannon's publication leveraged the Gamergate movement, sowing conspiracy theories about the game's media targeting progressive critics and all the and all the while establishing a larger, younger readership for Breitbart and alt-right publications like it. Bannon said his company also found in Gamergate a political model. In the years leading to Trump's presidential run, Gamergate and Breitbart would help to seed the alt-right movement online with a band of disgruntled men who found their bigotry could extend beyond the world of games and their methods, synchronizing online harassment, delegitimizing the press, would be repurposed by forums such as slash r slash the underscore Donald to stymie Trump's critics. Whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. While, while Gamergate has fizzled as an organized movement, its intent has metastar metastasized in scary and sadly foreseeable fashions. The video game streaming community, where hosts play video games live for audiences of thousands, has become a new target of toxic gaming culture. Streamers are often targeted by their rivals or by their own entitled and embittered fans. In January, a swatting incident, a prank, in which the police are sent to a person's home under the false assumption of a criminal threat, typically meant to be captured live on a video game stream, led to the death of a Kansas man. Earlier this month, 23-year-old Christopher Eric Giles drove for 10 hours to Austin, Texas and invaded the home shared by two YouTube stars, one known for her online video game streams, when Giles left the home, he fired at the police and was shot and killed. It is unlikely that this US administration will do much to heal this corner of the games community. They're not going to do anything so long as there's violence. If there's violence, they're going to they're going to connect it to video games. If there's a school shooting, they're going to connect it to video games. You see how screwed up Trump's presidency is? After all, its behaviour is a reflection of Trump's worst traits. Bullying, check. Entitlement, check. And when feeling concerned and undermined, explicit threats. Double check. Being racist, check. Being sexist, check. Being homophobic, check. And being the worst president in the history of mankind, triple check. Trump, please retire, never to be seen again. Addressing toxicity in violence in, and violence in gaming culture will not be easy. No, they just can't be bothered to do so. But following some turbulent years, the various corners of the games industry and media that covers it have begun the difficult work of self-improvement. It is slow and it is imperfect, but it is happening. Publications such as Zeal, Feminist Frequency and Spawn on Me are expanding the audience of game criticism with an emphasis on inclusivity. Smaller developers have served as the tip of the spear for creative progress, building games that capture underrepresented or unrepresented experiences. But the big video game publishers have begun to play their role too. About time. Providing more opportunities to play as women and people of colour, and non profits such as Take This Work to destigmatize mental health in the community, working online and at events to help those seeking support. There is another serious, there's another serious conversation about the video's comfort with violence. Games have the power to reflect the entirety of the human experience, yet they often still default to conflict and gore. Call of Duty anyone? Mortal Kombat? Any FPS game? Anything realistic? Game publishers seem to be gradually recognising the opportunity to stretch beyond gratuitous power fantasies targeted at young adult males, a big but ultimately limited audience. 
Last week, the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, took to the stage at the annual DICE Summit in Las Vegas to focus on Microsoft's renewed focus on inclusivity. With all, this new, with all these new tools empowering new creators, Spencer said, and with the increasing reach to new gamers around the globe, I think we as an industry are at our own crossroads. Has gaming reached its full potential and power to reflect the shape of the world of all of us? There is a growing sense among players and gamer, gamer makers that change, that change isn't merely a chore, but a reward in itself. More growth means more gains. If video games continue to expand, meeting their potential, becoming medium of a generation. It will not be because of increasingly extravagant graphics or realistic simulation, but because they are made and enjoyed by a greater diversity. But take note of this, Trump. Take note. It will not be because of an increasingly extravagant graphics or realistic simulation, but because they are made and enjoyed by a greater diversity of people. People who are not excluded either by the violence of a toxic gaming community or the violence in games themselves. What's most unsettling about Trump's... What's, what's more unsettling about Trump's delusionally, idiotically stupid instinct to target video games in the wake of gun violence is how it neglects any of this death and how tidily it aligns with the talking points of the National Rifle Association. Trump's, Trump's unnecessary statement eerily echoes the words of NRA Executive Vice President Wayne Lapierre, who, following the 2012 Sandy Hook school shooting that claimed 28 lives, used video games as an alternative scapegoat. Idiots! Why are you so stupid? These words serve better as a concise description of the gun trade. They do not describe an industry in a state of reflection and repair. Filled with educational games such as Minecraft. In what way is Minecraft educational? All you do is mine for hours and build your own buildings. That's all you do! And you have to make sure you survive as well. So in what way is Minecraft educational? Welcoming communities like Awesome Games Done Quick and esports programs that offer scholarships to higher education, the games industry has already been forced to confront the relationship between its products and toxic violent behaviour. School shootings are just not... Take notes, Trump, you stupid idiot clown. School shootings are just not a part of the picture. Long story short, school shootings have nothing to do with violent video games. And research has proven this so many times. Anyway, H1Z1 leaves early access with new cars only also Royale mode. Daybreak's Battle Royale game gets a full launch and a surprising new game mode. Let's get back onto lighter subjects. H1Z1 is launching out of early access today, the, the article was written yesterday, and features a new team based cars only mode called Auto Royale. The mode consists of up to 30 teams of 4 players. Goodness me, that's 120 players! That's more than PUBG and Fortnite Battle Royale. TAKE THAT SUCKERS! One drives while the other three passengers lean out of windows and shoot, speeding across the map as the circle of gas closes, collecting power-ups like oil slicks, smoke screens and double jumps, launching off ramps and doing battle with each other. I got to play a couple of rounds of Auto Royale this week as on a test server, and you can see gameplay videos and you know what I mean. 
as for H1Z1 itself, it's launching with a few changes to its standard Battle Royale experience. Most notably, players will be able to select the map grid they want to spawn over until now. Until now, you spawned over the map in a random location. This tactical deployment, as it's being called, more closely mirrors Battle Royale games such as PUBG, which lets you decide when you want to leave from the play, and thus gives players a good degree of control over what part of the map they want to begin playing in. A new heat map updated every few seconds will give players an idea of where players are other, where other players are landing. Also, players will usually, about 80% of the time says Daybreak, be able to see the area of the starting save zone, the circle of grass, before they spawn, which will also help them decide where to land. I was told the price of H1Z1 will not change as it departs early access. It'll still be $20. $20 for $20? Well, that's not bad. I can handle that. And it's 15 quid on Steam, essentially. 4.49 on CD keys. Boom! So if you want to get it at a discount, CD keys is the place to go. It's been a long road, so to speak, for H1Z1's exit from early access. The Battle Royale game started off as a popular mode for Sony Online Entertainment's free to play multiplayer survival game H1Z1 after SOE Sony Online Entertainment became Daybreak Game became Daybreak Game Company H1Z1 split into two different games H1Z1 just survived the survival game and H1Z1 King of the Kill Battle Royale both were in early access and both became paid for games rather than free to play yeah, fair play understandable more recently just survive dropped the H1Z1 from its title and remains in early access. The King of the Kill dropped everything but H1Z1 from its title. And now H1Z1 is finally out of early access. Gosh, what a long and strange development. Lord, long, blah. Gosh, what a long, strange development cycle it's been. Along the way, H1Z1 became a popular standalone battle royale game, opening the door for PUBG and Fortnite, which has since surpassed, which have since surpassed H1Z1 in player count and popularity. While its numbers have dwindled in the past six months, its peak was around 150,000 concurrent players, it's now more regularly around 10,000. H1Z1 still has a pro scene and several yearly tournaments. Might give it a go. Ah! No! I closed an article down! No! There we go. Ah! No! Don't do that! That's not acceptable! Why you do this to me? No. Oh. Goodness sake, hang on. Right. Right, anyway, um, put that there. Speaking of Battle Royales, Fortnite is getting jetpacks! For, but the update here is that Fortnite's jetpack item has been delayed after the dev team found a last minute design issue. Oof, just as well they picked up on it, otherwise you'd have had a, you'd have had a very angry fan base. This week's new item is being changed from the jetpack to the hunting rifle. Epic said, we found a last minute design issue with the jetpack that's going to delay its launch and we're working on correcting it. The jetpack will lift off at a later time. <laughs> I see what they did there. Meanwhile, thousands of miles, meanwhile, thousands of miles away. You'll be able to enjoy lots of no scopes with the new hunting rifle. <laughs> no scopes. <laughs> MLG soundboard, anyone? And a new lucky point of interest on the map. Ooh, now what could that mean? Actual details of how the jetpack will work are still a little hazy, but design issue certainly suggests that this will be a functional item rather than a cosmetic one. No, really? Well. The jetpack, that's definitely gonna... That's definitely gonna throw a spanner in the works. That is definitely gonna throw a spanner in the works. Hmm, interesting. Now oh, we'll wait and see what happens. Anyway. 
Overwatch. We have a new character, ladies and gentlemen. And what and who is this new character going to be? Overwatch's new character is Bridget. Here's what she can do. Blizzard has revealed the newest hero to join Overwatch. Ah, they gave us the pronunciation. It's Brigitta. The character has been detailed in the latest public test realm patch notes and also on the game's official website and is listed as a support class hero. An engineering, an engineer with peerless armor constructing abilities, Brigitta Lindholm is a valiant squire who fights on the front line to protect her allies. Read the patch notes. Brigitta's armor engineering capabilities make her a stalwart support hero capable of holding her ground in combat while also providing healing and armor for her allies. The official website, meanwhile, says Brigitta specializes in armor and can throw repair packs to heal teammates or automatically heal nearby allies when she damaged foes with her, when she damages foes with her flail. Bridget's primary weapon is a heavy hitting rocket flail, which she swings in a wide arc in front of her to smash multiple enemies at once. Team kill? Like, like wiping out the entire team? I can see, I could see that happening. The whip shot ability uses the fl uses the flail to strike enemies at a distance and stun them. Landing blows allows Brigitte's passive ability, Inspire, to heal nearby allies over time. Her barrier shield deploys a frontal energy barrier that can absorb a limited amount of damage and protect any allies, di allies directly behind her. With her shield deployed, she can execute shield bash to lunge forward and stun the first enemy in her path. From the sound of it, she's a mixture of Reinhardt and her father, Tor Torbjorn. Her, her ultimate ability is called Rally and is described as galvanizing call to arms that generates a substantial amount of armor for nearby allies and increasing Brigitte's movement speed so she can lead them into battle. Here's hoping she doesn't go all. Yeah, pretty much. Check out Brigitte's origin story in the video above or read her story and learn about her abilities below, courtesy of Blizzard. Well, that, that's a tasty hero. My go to still Soldier 76. It's the easiest one to do. I know that makes me sound like a, uh, keep it family friendly. I know that makes me sound like a chicken not being able to, not wanting to learn new, the other heroes, but each to their own. And now it's the battle of the free games. Ba 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 ba. And this month it is March. Microsoft are currently two nil up this year. Sony need to pull something out of the bag. And with Microsoft winning last month, they have the advantage of having their games announced first on my podcast. This month's free games. For the Xbox One, we have Trials of the Blood Dragon now. And Super Hot. Um, a Trials of the Blood Dragon. I'd say, that, whew, I'd say Super Hot is definitely one that I've heard of. And it definitely sounds really good. I say Super Hot is definitely a very interesting game. It's definitely one I'm going to be trying out. The Trials of the Blood Dragon. I'm guessing that's going to be like a Trials game, possibly. I might be wrong. I don't know. I might be wrong. Trials of the Blood. Yeah, it is a racing game. Yeah, it, it is basically a Trials game. It's basically a Trials game. Can you get behind that? And we've got Brave, Disney, it's a Disney game, uh, well, obviously based on the film, and Quantum Conundrum. 
quantum conundrum. Now, what does it involve? It's a puzzle platformer. It's a puzzle platformer. Well. Okay. Puzzle platformer, I can get behind that. So, Trials, Super Hot, Brave, and a puzzle platformer. But it's definitely caught my intrigue. Sony, you're gonna need to pull something special out of the bag, and what do we have in store? Oh my word! They haven't, they haven't half gone all out for their games of the month. <laughs> Wowzers! The two big profile titles, Bloodborne and Ratchet and Clank. Mighty Number no. 9's also part of the lineup as well. That's a That's definitely a sign my stomach is telling me Make something to eat, I am hungry, you must make lunch Okay, so let's see what we have The final The final list of games that are available as part of the um PS Plus package for Mar for March, Bloodborne, Ratchet and Clank, Legend of K Anniversary, Mighty Number no. Nine is there, Claire Extended Cut, and Bombing Busters. So that's one, two, three, four, five games for the PS4. Wow. Okay. That's impressive. That's impressive. I mean, hmm. That's a tough one. I mean, yes. I mean, that's. Oof. Who wins this month's game? Who wins this month's free beat? Who wins this month? It's a tough one. That is a tough one. I am going to go with... PlayStation. PlayStation wins this month's free games for me. Bloodborne, Ratchet and Clank, Mighty Number no. 9, I think that pretty much sells it. I mean, you only, I, think, I mean, but I mean, I think it was close. Trials of the Blood Dragon and Super Hot. Those are two pretty good games. But as far as high profiles concerned, Sony, Sony hits it for six. So that's two one now, and that means for April, Sony have their games announced first on my podcast. So, and while we are on the subject of Trials of the Blood Dragon, it is time for the best part of the show, and it goes a little something like... Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting, points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Yep, points and trophies, the trophy achievement hunters. Now, it's a shame that there's only two secret achievements, but there are 20 achievements altogether, so I am going to go through them all. I'm going to go through the entire achievement list, from top to bottom, not in the order of the uh, achievement per se, but in order of gamer score. Right. Ha <laughs> ha! Boom shaka like a 20 gamer score, score a basket. Laser tag, 20 gamer score. Survive 30 seconds inside the laser pit. Oh good luck with that one. Life finds a way. 20 gamer score. Escaped the fury of a monster. On deadly ground, 20 gamer score. 
Welcome to the Trials of the Blood Dragon. This I'm trained for. 20 gamer score. Cross the track before the train in Final Reckoning. Oh, oh, it's one of those scenes. It's one of those. Epilogue. 40 gamer score. Watch the secret ending. Friendly fire. 40 gamer score. Get an enemy to shoot and kill another enemy. Go ninja, go ninja, go! 40 gamer score. Blades of the Dragon has officially been cancelled. No! King of the Schoolyard. 40 gamer score. Complete your sticker album collection. I'm doing my part. 40 gamer score. The CIA has been vanquished. No fate, but what we make. 40 gamer score. You learned the truth. Now work on a plan. Sing hallelujah! 40 gamer score! You've been to hell and back! Hallelujah! Uh, no. Winners don't do drugs, kids. 40 gamer score. Shut down the turbo crank pipeline. You have chosen wisely. 40 gamer score. Found the mother of all treasures! We came, we saw, and we kicked ass! 70 game score. You've passed the trials of the Blood Dragon. Cyber Commando! 80 game score. Get an A grade in all main story levels. Mark 6. 100. <clears throat> 100 game score! Get an A plus grade on all main story levels. All grown up now. 150 gamer score! Evolve your inner beasts to its final form. <laughs> and the two secret achievements? The truth is out there. 40 gamer score. Find all five secrets. Intense military training complete. 100 gamer score! You've obtained an A grade in all intensive military training CD ROMs. So, put all those together and you get the elusive final. <clears throat> you get the elusive final total of everyone say it with me now! <clears throat> 1,000 Gamer Score! Sure. <laughs> and that is this week's edition of the podcast. What are we going to be talking about next week? Well, you'll need to tune in to find out, ladies and gentlemen. So, in any case... Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to continue um, uh, following what I do on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to join the notification squad. So you turn on all notifications. So that way you click the bell and you turn on all, and that turns on all notifications. So you don't miss anything I do on the channel. On the left you've got uh, Pac-Man World from yesterday for Throwback Thursday and on the right you've got my dedicated Trophy Achievement Podcast playlist. So, Saturday, Everything Wrong with Tom and Jerry, Episode 1, Puss Gets the Boots. Uh, Puss Gets the Boots. This is going to be fun. Anyway, see you guys again soon. Fantastic day. Peace out and stay faithful.